Gravitational waves distort space and time. That means it's almost obvious how you can detect gravitational waves. You have to measure length changes. If you imagine you have got a, 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 spherical, a spherical ball in front of you, the gravitational wave impinges on it. It stretches it one way, lets it come back to being spherical again, then compresses it the other way. So if you imagine now taking two arms at right angles to each other, one arm will increase in length while the other arm decreases in length. The basic underlying principle is always laser interferometry. A gravitational wave detector is basically a Michelson interferometer with a couple of tricks. So you use a very good laser light source. The light coming out of this laser hits a beam splitter. The light is split into two beams. One beam goes in this direction and the other beam goes in this direction. The beam is retroreflected at mirrors, high reflectors. The beam is then recombined at the beam splitter and at the output port we detect the light. The resulting um, light power at the output of this beam splitter now depends on the microscopic positioning, positioning of these mirrors. If the length to one mirror is slightly changed by a gravitational wave, for example, then the power at the output will slightly be changed and that you can detect with a photodetector. So we have two test masses, hopefully not moving very much with respect to each other in, inside the spacecraft, inside their vacuum cans. And what we want to do is measure their separation. And so to do that, we build an interferometer which sits in the middle and reflects light off both of these optical masses. It measures with very high precision or with very low noise the separation of the two test masses, which is the basic measurement of LISA Pathfinder and will also be for LISA. The optical bench receives the laser light uh, through optical fibres and then it directs it via a series of mirrors and beam splitters to uh, re be reflected from the proof masses, the things that are floating inside the vacuum canisters, and then the beams are recombined and that measurement process called interferometry is what reveals the, at very sensitive level the motion of the proof masses. And this is an example of essentially what one of these mirrors looks like. Now this is a beautifully machined piece of extremely pure fused silica. So we have to be able to put this thing down and control its angle and its position extremely well. When we turned it on, it worked immediately, perfectly. And so we are confident that we have a very good understanding of the interferometer, which is, of course, essential to design the even more complex interferometer of LISA. The whole idea of Pathfinder is to remove a lot of the risk for a space-borne gravitational wave detector. A lot of the challenges are the same. You still need an optical bench to read out the position of the local test mass very precisely. You still need thrusters. You still need a lot of the same technologies for, for LISA as we are demonstrating with LISA Pathfinder. We have done a factor thousand better than anything that has been done before. And this opened new doors, not just to LISA, but to the field in general. The ability of doing this for, any, for many gravitational missions is a major leap forward.